Hi everyone, good evening. So, um, welcome to today's webinar. I hope I'm audible, yes. So today we will be looking at, you know, common mistakes in speaking. And throughout the webinar, if you have any doubts, you can either raise your hands or you can just drop them in the chat box. By the end of the lesson, I will clear all of your doubts for you. Yes. So to begin with, um, I am Sanchana and I am an IELTS trainer and um, I work at Red Fox Education. And Red Fox Education basically provides online IELTS classes and also other English classes. And I will discuss about that uh, further uh, by the end of the webinar. Yes. Today we will be looking at, like I mentioned, listening and common mistakes to avoid in listening. So first, before we begin, let me give you a brief description about IELTS. This is for those who are not very sure about IELTS. So IELTS is an exam that you give when you want to go abroad. It's basically an exam that tests your language skill, okay, your English language skill. So what happens is, um, yes. So, okay. So you have uh, two categories in this, general and academic. So your general uh, exam is for those who want to go abroad to work, whereas the academic exam is for those who want to go abroad to study. So this is the major difference between these two. And uh, the exam as such, there, you know, there is difference, like uh, especially in your um, writing, writing task one, in general, you will have a letter writing and in uh, academic, you will have to describe a bar graph or, you know, a pie chart and things like that. But when it comes to a listening test, everything is same. You get the same recordings and all. So further on moving to listening. So if you look at listening, um, listening is this exam where uh, you have the, I mean, you have the entire exam for 40 minutes. Okay, and uh, I'm sorry, you have the entire exam for 30 minutes and you have 40 questions to be answered. So 30 minutes and 40 questions. And in this, you have four tasks, task one, task two, task three, and task four. And in each task, you have 10 questions. So making it a total of 40 questions to be answered in 30 minutes. So in task one, you listen to this recording where, you know, uh, two people are speaking. Uh, it's mostly a dialogue. So in this, uh, when I say two people are speaking, it's because, um, you know, they speak about, say, uh, rent. Um, okay. Otherwise, uh, a hotel booking or something like that. And, uh, you know, um, it's mostly a male and a female. And you get in the entire speaking lesson, you have a variety of different accents, ranging from Australian, British accent, you have American accent. So you have a variety of different accents. So when you prepare, please don't prepare in just a particular accent. Prepare, you know, in a range, in a variety, so that uh, in the exam, you don't, you know, find it difficult. And then in task two, you have a monologue. A monologue basically means just one person speaking. Mm. So it'll either be a tourist guide explaining something about a museum or, um, you know, a person telling others about um, an exhibition or something. And then in task three, you will have a lecture. So there'll be an academic discussion. That's a purely academic topic. Even for dental, you get that part. So that's what you get. And in task four, again, you have a discussion topic. Um, I mean, not a discussion, but a presentation topic where there's this person who presents a paper. Uh, sometimes there might be cross questions, but otherwise it's mostly just one person speaking. This is what happens in your listening exam totally. And today we are just going to look at some mistakes to avoid. Okay. Um, so I hope you're all familiar with your you know, listening test. And then we'll look at your mistakes yes so one thing that i forgot to tell you is uh, your test is um, you know your first task one is always the easiest and your task four is always the most difficult one okay yes just a second
Yes. So, uh, like I mentioned, we are going to look at mistakes to avoid while you're doing your uh, listening exam. So, first, very, very important uh, mistake that people make is they avoid listening to the instructions. Okay. So, in the beginning of the listening test, you will have instructions. And many times people forget listening to the instructions, which, you know, is um, extremely, what to say, I won't say it's wrong. I would say it's risky because uh, your instructions is very, very important. Okay. So if the task says, for example, it's instruction, the task says not more than two words, it will cost you a mark if you write three words. Okay. Uh, so you have to be careful with that. And other instances, you know, you might uh, circle just, you know, one solution, whereas that might be incomplete and the answer might require you to circle two. So always make sure that you are, um, you know, listening to instructions and doing exactly what the instructions tell you to do. Next, listening to the audio blindly. Don't do that. You are not like watching a movie or something. When your audio is playing, you have to be not 100, but 200% focused, okay? And uh, make sure that your entire concentration is there. I know it is extremely difficult to concentrate for like, you know, 30 minutes, straight but you will have to train your mind to do that and for that only you will require to practice throughout okay so at red fox education we have a lot of practice tests so you can always you know avail them and um, you can you know keep practicing so it's a big mistake if you just sit down and listen without any thought okay so you will have to you know pay attention and uh, listen to what you are i mean understand what you're listening to uh, you will have to make sense of everything. Only then you will be able to discover the answers. Okay. And uh, you will have to also, uh, you know, try and uh, look for these uh, clues or cue words so that uh, it will be easier for you to understand, uh, be able to relate it. Next, many people lose focus. So this is another thing that you must avoid. So in case you are trying to just find an answer for one particular question. Then what happens is your entire focus is on that and then you lose out on everything else. So try not to give up on one difficult question. Okay. Uh, so it is important that even if you lose one question, it is important that you complete the remaining 39. So, uh, you know, if this happens, just try to remain calm in case you don't understand a question. Just let that be. You can come back to it later and you can just go through the remaining thing. When I say come back to it later, no, you cannot listen to the audio again. You can only listen to the audio once. But then there are a few, you know, grammar tips, grammar tricks that will help you find the answer later on. Um, this maybe we can co cover in another webinar or uh, we also have separate classes for it for in case you would like to know, you know, how to um, solve questions that you have missed in your reading exam. Next, uh, another mistake people make is improper usage of time. So when it comes to listening exam, the time is already set because basically they give you instructions. But in the overall chart, this disorganized time management will, you know, cost you quite a lot. Okay. So that is something that you must avoid. So listening is basically you are, you will have to multitask. Okay. Uh, you're writing, you're listening, and you're also reading. You're listening to the, you know, uh, conversation. You're reading your question paper and you're writing the answers. So all this is happening together. And I know that it is quite challenging, but you will have to get yourself ready to it. So one will, you know, I mean, you will be able, you will listen to four recordings of native speakers speak for like 30 minutes and then write the answers to a series of questions. So this means that there is a possibility that you will not be prepared, you know, for what is um, what you're about to hear, um, which is worse, but you will also lose attention. If you lose attention, then you will not be able to catch up. So don't lose attention and uh, don't waste your time. Next, avoid distractors. So distractors mostly is, you know, mm, what to say, a person screaming nearby for some reason or the traffic noise. Just try to ignore them. Okay. So, 
many times also what happens is in your exam uh, there is an entire length passage that they are you know i mean length conversation that they are having but you require only certain things okay so you know usually these distractors are used in exams to confuse candidates in reality it is a wrong answer and appears right okay for example i say let's meet at 7 o'clock and the opposite person says 7 sounds fine so you will immediately write when are they meeting you write 7 don't write 7 because um after just a minute i will change the answer saying okay 7 i just forgot at 7 o'clock on thursday i'm actually busy shall we meet at 8 so you know try to just avoid all of that uh, you know so that is very very important okay next incorrect knowledge of spelling and grammar now spelling is a very very important thing when it comes to listening or any of your exams i mean uh, ielts exams but what happens is in listening um the speaker says stars the speaker says stars but you hear it as star and so you write star or the speaker says star and you write stars that is also considered a spelling mistake so singular plural is very very important so unless you have in-depth knowledge of english grammar um, you can make grammatical mistakes so try to you know uh, work on that so grammatical errors are very tricky in most situations so incorrect understanding of tense spelling grammar all of this will lead you to you know making a lot of mistakes which will confuse you as well as the examiner so you should be sufficiently aware about using the correct spelling and the correct gram grammar when it comes to your answer sheet okay otherwise the answers will be marked incorrect okay so practice and the more you practice you yourself will see a difference next leaving blank spaces see now what happens is your ielts exam you know touchwood doesn't have anything called negative marking okay so when you don't have something called negative marking what happens is you can make mistakes you will not lose a mark for making mistakes when you are allowed that privilege why would you leave a blank empty so even if you don't know the answer just write something and in the space of writing something only what i was telling you is there is a technique where with grammar you can fill in answers which you know maybe if you join classes you can have an in-depth um, you know lesson about that but there are techniques but even if you don't know something just just to fluke it just write something okay so the power of possibility can be applied and just you know guessing what the answer might be just put down the answers there okay next is listening to the audio and writing on the answer sheet so what happens is you have only one chance to listen so you know it is crucial that you are neither distracted nor missing the details However, it is not possible that you, you know, pick an answer and from the question paper while you're, you know, in your listening time. This, this might confuse you. So don't touch with that. Once the audio is complete, you can transfer it to your answer sheet. I am talking about the paper-based IELTS test, okay? For those of you who don't know, we have a paper-based test and a computer-based test. Now, this paper-based test, you have to do everything by pen and paper. And computer-based test, everything is typing, everything you have to do on the computer. The speaking exam alone for both does not change. Okay. The listening exam answers you have to type. Listening, you have to listen. That is nothing to do. So, um, so when they are giving you that extra 10 minutes at the end, that's when you transfer the answers. Don't do it in between the exam. So these are the few things that I wanted to actually mention about, uh, you know, before we, I mean, some common mistakes that i wanted to mention about so now on the screen you can see that there is this presentation so this is how your lessons will look like when you take classes with you know red fox education so basically this is how all of your lessons will look like and you will also have you know videos from british experts hello there and welcome to lesson six this is the in each of the three lessons we'll look at a different part of the test so this one covers part one so this way he will be explaining things to you and this is how your lesson will you know progress and with every lesson you will have something called your homework which you have to complete okay um i think there's a network issue there will be homework and you have to complete the homework so this is also compulsory so we have you know beginners intermediate and advanced courses it's 
a variety of different different courses uh, when it comes to your ielts according to your level according to your you know comfort we will choose an approach based on that so that you know uh, you are comfortable so do you have any doubts regarding red fox education regarding the general ielts regarding the webinar or you know anything else yes any doubts anything that anybody wants to ask me okay is this from uh, is this from kerala no uh, this is from india right now our head office is in uh, chennai and uh, but all the classes happen online so there is no actual worry about where you are from or anything because all the classes happen online okay so now you now you are giving a train for speaking no right now i was talking about listening exam but uh, we have listening speaking reading writing all the four modules you can even choose a separate module or you can also take all the four modules so now we are uh, handling only listening now right now the webinar i just gave you one small very small topic on listening but uh, we have in depth you know lessons on all the topics okay that what time indian time indian again uh, that depends whether you want a group or you know a one on one so maybe if you could you know um, does i think uh, we have just posted uh, the link and the phone number and everything in the whatsapp i mean in the chat box if you could just give us a call or send us a message the the you know concerned team will get back to you and give you a, you know detailed in information on everything so that they can help you choose a correct time for your convenience okay so uh, what what's your name tindu tindu so are you give planning to give your ielts exam yeah i'm, I'm planning for uh, academic okay wonderful and uh, like are you working right now are you studying yeah i'm working okay superb so which country are you looking forward to going to canada okay wonderful and do you have like a deadline for your ielts no 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 they they told me first yeah, i can take ielts then only they will proceed okay okay so tindu what i'll do is uh, i will uh, pass on your name i don't have your phone number but let's not you know get that revealed here uh, could you just you know contact uh, the number given in the chat box so that you know maybe you could send a message okay that number so that uh, the team will give you you know detail information they will help you find a suitable course for you okay okay can you tell me regarding the cost about this course uh that's what into can can you just you know send a message maybe okay. we we have courses from 1000 to 5000 rupees so again it's a, it's a variety we'll have to choose we'll have to see which is no 1000 to 8000 i'm sorry so we'll have to see which you know is so more suitable for you whether you want individual whether you want one on one whether you want all the four you want single you know this like that individual individual trainer training also you are giving yes we also provide individual training like one on one okay so like i mentioned is you know there's a variety it the courses start from 500 but we have courses up to 8000 8000 is the maximum so because there's a range of so many things i told you that if you contact them they'll tell you okay into now this is what is your requirement uh you know this is your timing everything so this will be a course fee and they they'll be able to help you properly now if i give you all the information you will just get confused okay okay it's okay okay so i will anyway pass on your name to the team okay okay yes okay then thank you for attending the webinar hope you all had a good time and uh, if there's anything please contact you know our uh, whatsapp or instagram or anything the number and everything is given in the chat box okay can you have you copied the number your number or uh, the number given in the chat box let me see okay i'll just make it easy for you and space that
Okay, okay. Can you see like now I've placed, uh, posted it separately? Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, I saw, I saw. Yes. So just make a note of the number. So that because once I close the Zoom meeting, the number will just disappear. Okay, I will not. Yes. Is there any other doubt into that you would like to ask? So what is the difference uh, between uh, academic and uh, general? Is there a dif uh, difference uh, uh, only uh, in writing? Uh, major difference is in writing, but you will also find a little difference in reading. Your passages will change. For academic, it will be more academic related. For general, it will be more, you know, regarding current affairs and, you know, social topics. Okay. That pattern will be different. Uh, reading passage. Uh, reading no, no, no. Passage pattern different. and all will be same. Only the passage will be different. Okay. Same true. That, that, that matter content will be different. Only the content will be different, but your pattern and all will be the same. Okay, content will be different. Okay. Okay. So. I hope this was helpful and I will see you all in the next webinar. Okay. Bye. If, uh, one more doubt. Yes, one yes, more yes. doubt. Yes, uh, yeah. If I'm taking uh, ILDS for academic, so I cannot use it for uh, PR, no? No, later on you will have to, anyway, you will have to, uh, 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 IATS is valid only for two years. No. For PR, you will require to go there and only after two years, you will be allowed to do the PR, I mean, apply for PR. So anyway, you will have to give your IELTS again. Okay. So that time you can give your general IELTS, but uh, because you're preparing now itself, your base will be strong that time. Okay. For uh, uh, PR, anyway, I cannot, uh, if it is valid also, I cannot use this IELTS, right? No, you can't, you can't. PR, you will require the general IELTS. Thank you. Okay, bye and have a nice evening, everybody. Bye. Take, take care.